Minister Tiffany here, and I would like to welcome you to Fresh Future TV. I'm Minister Tiffany, and I'm the Director of Youth Engagement here at Fresh Start Christian Center, and I'm so excited that you decided to join us today for Fresh Future TV because we have something awesome planned just for you. So before you do anything, let's pray. Father, I thank you for every person that is watching this broadcast right now, Lord. I pray that you will bless them for watching it, and I pray that the people around them would be affected in a positive way because of this lesson, and that by the end of it, we will know and believe that you are always with us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, are you ready? Because we are starting a brand new series. You know what that means, okay? Um, I have this special jacket on. As much as you would want to call me Dr. Tiffany, um, that's not who I am today. But this is my lab coat because I am a scientist. A scientist, yes, I said it. Because our brand new series is called Elements of Faith. Today's scripture is coming from Genesis chapter 28, verse 15, and I'll be reading from the International Tip. I'll be reading from the International Children's Bible. And the scripture says, I am with you and I will protect you everywhere you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. And that's the word, and the word is blessed. Now, since our new series is called Elements of Faith, I have something that I would like to do with you. And it's a little science experiment so that you can learn about what our lesson is going to be about. Today's lesson is called Cloud by Day. And in today's lesson, we're going to make a cloud because you're going to see how the clouds are related to our lesson and the scripture that we're going to read a little later. So for this experiment, here's what you will need. You will need a jar that has a lid. You will also need some boiling water. You will also need some hairspray, which for the purposes of this experiment, we're going to call our cloud substance. You will also need some blue food coloring, just for the effect if you wanna give some tropical vibes and feel like you're enjoying the deep blue ocean of somewhere tropical and nice and like gives you vacation vibes, yeah? And because you're dealing with boiling water in a jar that should be glass, we want you to do this with a parent or a trusted adult. And you should also wear gloves, some protective eyewear, and something to cover your body just in case something happens. What you're going to do first is take that boiling water and pour it in the mason jar or the glass jar. Then you're going to take your cloud substance and quickly spray it on top of the water and seal the jar as soon as you can. Before this, you can also drop a, a drop of food coloring if you want your water to be blue but it is not required. Now, once your jar is sealed, you should see a cloud forming, all right? So I hope those directions were clear. If not, here's a video of what it should look like. Once you've done your experiment, you can take the lid off and you should see a cloud flow out of the jar. How amazing is that? What can we learn from this experiment? Well, one thing that you can learn is that the cloud can be related to something or someone. Can you guess who? The Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is related to a cloud and the cloud literally hovered over the water and formed over the water and covered it, how much greater do you think the Spirit will do that with us and for us? What do you know about clouds? Take a second and think about it. Your second's over, all right? Let's get into some knowledge about clouds. So what are clouds? A cloud is a visible mass. It's usually in the air or in the sky, and it's composed of water vapor that is floating in the atmosphere. 
Now, I know this is 2022, and when you hear the word cloud, you may say, oh yeah, I saved my homework to the cloud, but we're not talking about that cloud. Although, the cloud and actual clouds in the sky do have a similarity. The cloud is also an on-demand computing system that has resources, right? And it's always available, as long as you have a connection. Now, we can shout right there because just how the clouds are related to the Spirit of God, if He's always available when we're connected to Him, that means that we have all the resources that we need. Now, if you're a scientist, kind of like me, you may know that there are different types of clouds. There are cirro clouds and cumulo clouds, stratus clouds and nimbo clouds, right? That let us know different things about what's happening in the weather. Now, I know we already began our cloud talk, but how many of you actually like science? Like really, really, really like science? Well, you can raise your hand in your house. <laughs> you can lift both hands and say hallelujah if you love science. But although you may like science or love science, science is cool because it explains so much about how our world works, right? We can learn things in biology or chemistry where it talks about chemicals or physics, where it talks about like gravity and stuff. And we can study everything in the inner workings of our body to the construction and designs of roller coasters with science. But science does not have all the answers. And although it may give us um, some answers about things. Science helped do many great things like curing diseases and predicting hurricanes and traveling into space. There's so much more that can be learned outside of science that can only come from the Holy Spirit and our God in heaven. In this new series, we've chosen to use science to talk about faith, which is kind of strange because when you break it down, science is like all about facts and figures, like the things we can see with our eyes and observe and touch and taste and smell and feel, while faith is believing in the things we cannot see. We're not going to be using science to prove our faith because we are sure about our faith. And if you're not, keep watching but we are going to use some amazing science experiments to help us remember some important lessons about faith. So the first four lessons that we're going to teach in our new series are going to teach us why we should have faith in God. And again, we want to emphasize this very thing. These science experiments are not proof for faith, but they are visible reminders of the stories we will read in the lessons and the lessons that they will teach us. We're used to seeing clouds all the way up in the sky, not down low on the ground, and certainly not in a jar or a bottle. Yet, it was a low lying cloud that led the Israelites from Egypt, a land where they have lived as slaves, to the promised land. The Israelites had never set foot out of Egypt for generations. They had no maps to guide them on their way, no GPS, no road signs to point them where to go, but God used a cloud by day and something else by night to lead his people to freedom. In the book of Exodus chapter 13, this is what it says. The Lord showed them the way. During the day, he went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud. And during the night, the Lord was in a pillar of fire to give them light they could travel during the day or night. The pillar of cloud was always with them during the day and the pillar of fire was always with them during the night. So imagine waking up in the morning and seeing a giant cloud outside of your door. Like it's huge, like bro, what are you doing here? What is this? God, what's happening right now, right? The cloud never dissipated and never went back in the sky but it was there every day in front of the camp. They actually had tents and it was there for all of Israel to see. Not only did the Israelites have a cloud to follow by day, but they had a pillar of fire to keep them company at night. So day and night, the visible presence of the Lord never left them. God wanted his people to know that he was always there. He wanted them to trust him enough to follow when he led them. 
The story of the pillar cloud and the pillar of fire reminds us that God is still with us. Even though we can't see him or even see his presence, we can trust that he is always there for us. So let's check out this video that's going to show you exactly what I was talking about from the scripture in Exodus. Enjoy. Pillars of cloud and fire. Today's memory verse is from Genesis chapter 28, verse 15. It says, I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. The message for today's story is we thank God for taking good care of us. Have you ever been lost? The Israelites didn't get lost because they had two things to lead them. Many years had passed since Pharaoh's daughter had found Moses in the basket by the edge of the river. While Moses lived with his family, his parents taught him to know and love God. When he was about 12 years old, he went to live with the Pharaoh's daughter in the king's palace. Moses had grown to be a wise man and God had chosen him to lead the Israelites away from the cruel Pharaoh in Egypt to a better land. When the Israelites left Egypt, they crossed the Red Sea and soon found themselves in a desert. What is a desert like? It's very hot and dry and full of sand, very hot during the day and very cold at night. Wild animals lived there, and even Moses wasn't sure which way they were to go. But God had a special plan to keep them safe and to make sure they wouldn't get lost. God led them in a wonderful way. During the daytime, the Israelites could see above them a huge cloud rising up like a pillar into the sky. When the cloud moved forward, the Israelites moved with it, for God was in the cloud leading them. But the cloud did more than just to show them where to go. During the heat of the day, the cloud gave the Israelites shade to keep them cool. It protected them from the burning sun. But at night, when it was cold and dark, a cloud wasn't much good. Then the Israelites needed light and warmth, and that's when the huge cloud became a pillar of fire. The fire gave them light at night. It also helped to keep them warm in the cold desert, and it scared away the wild animals that might try to hurt them too. God had come up with the perfect way to protect and lead his people. Day or night, the Israelites could always see that God was leading them and keeping them safe. They knew he was protecting them, and they praised him for his care. We can thank God for taking care of us too. He watches over us and leads us every day. And although we don't see a cloud or fire, we know God still protects us. Let's remember to thank Him for taking good care of us. Wasn't that video great? Now the Israelites did not have an easy journey through the wilderness. There were many dangers along the way. And there were times they wandered and and they even wondered where their next meal was coming from and where they will find water. There were dangerous animals and even dangerous people who tried to hurt them. Yeah, it's true, read your Bibles. Day in and day out, people could look at their tents and be reminded they fix my speech, Lord. Day in and day out, the people could look out of their tents and be reminded that they were not alone on this journey. The cloud never left their sight. And when sunset came, it changed into a pillar of fire. How crazy is that? That doesn't mean that there weren't times where the Israelites weren't unfaithful to God. But God had patience for those stiff-necked, stubborn people. Just how we can be sometimes. God showed his love and that his love never wavers or changes. He remained with them in good times and in bad times because he loved them and his love is not conditional. Now the Bible is filled with stories of God's faithful presence. When Daniel was cast into a den of lions in Daniel chapter 6, God shut the mouths of the lions so they wouldn't eat him. And when Daniel and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, say Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Abednego. When they were cast into the fiery furnace in Daniel chapter 3, when they looked in, the king saw four men walking around inside. And who do you think that fourth man was? Yes! It was Jesus. Hallelujah. 
So even in the New Testament, we get to see how God never leaves his people. God protected his missionaries, Peter and Paul, even when they went to prison so that they could do his will. God never left his faithful servants and he will never leave us. God is still present today, yesterday, and forevermore. And he's even present in the hearts of the believers. And when we place our trust in God, we can know for sure that he is always with us and he will never leave us. So you may not see God in a pillar of cloud today, but we can look at the clouds and know that God is watching us and he's always with us. Not a day goes by where there isn't a cloud in the sky. And although there may be the most beautiful, bright and sunny day, clouds are still there. And we may not see him in a pillar of fire, but we can feel his warmth when we are at a campfire. We can feel his warmth when we cover ourselves with our blankets at night as a reminder that he is covering us, protecting us, and keeping us warm. God loves his people and he will never leave us. We may not see him with our eyes, but we can have faith and know that he is always there. So here are your key takeaways for today. Number one, his cloud protects us. Key takeaway number two, his fire leads us. And key takeaway number three, he is always with us. You heard today's lesson and you're like, whoa, I never knew that science could be so cool but I certainly never knew that God could be this cool. I'm right with you. The only difference is I've already received salvation and I want the same for you. The book of Romans chapter 10 says this, if you declare with your mouth, that means if you say Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from death, then you will be saved. Declare, believe, and receive salvation. We believe with our hearts so that we could be made right with God. And we declare with our mouths and say we believe so that we can actually be saved. And the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be disappointed. So if you wanna come and be a believer, believe in this Lord Jesus Christ, who is a pillar cloud and a cloud of fire, we want you to join us because although it may sound a little crazy, the crazy love that God has for you is unimaginable. Like he loves you so much and he wants you to believe. He actually chose you to believe in him, but it's your choice. So will you choose him? If so, we are super excited. Like I could just start floating on a cloud before he comes riding on a cloud shining like the sun and the trumpet all right i'll stop but i'm so excited that you chose jesus today and if you need some more time to think about it don't take too long because this could be an opportunity that you may not have in the next minute or the next hour so if you want to say yes to jesus just say yes he loves you and he wants you to be a part of his kingdom so you can email us and connect with us at freshfuture at thefreshstartny.org and we will connect with you and help walk you through what this looks like, your new life in Christ with all of your new family, your brothers and sisters, and we can also help connect you to a local church. So join us, connect with us, and let's pray because if you did give your life to Christ, I want to pray with you. So Father, I pray that you will bless the person who receives salvation today. I pray that you will remind them that you are always with them, that they are fully loved and fully covered by you and your blood has saved them. You have saved their lives so that they can live a life eternally with you, Father. I pray for everyone around them to experience the glorious miracle that just happened through their salvation and that their life will never be the same. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Those of you who are believers, new believers, and old believers, we want to encourage you to continue to make disciples make disciples. That means we're going outside and proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ at the park, wherever you may go. Say his name so that somebody else can come into the knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. 
We love you. And until next time, we will see you right here on Fresh Future TV. I'm Minister Tiffany and I'm out.